Well, good morning and welcome once again to another Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar presented by us here in Global Product Support. Hope everybody's having a great week. Um, first day of fall. Can't wait to get into the rainy and crummy weather here. It's just uh, something to look forward to. Yay. All right. So uh, today, as it says there on your screen, we are going to be covering tables and uh, all the various things you can do with tables. Maybe not all of them, maybe not every last thing, but we're going to cover all, quite a bit of it. As always, uh, we are uh, Mike Hurtado, myself, Zach Travis, and Naman. Uh, Mike Sarwala is our moderator, helping out in the uh, questions answer section. So feel free to post as many questions as you can think of regarding tables anyway. Before we get started, as always, there is the aforementioned chat window. Um, if we have some time left over at the end, and we probably will this time, I think. We always say that. We always run out of time anyway. Well, hopefully we'll have some time to get through some questions that you might have or you might have always wanted to ask about the feature we're going to be covering, which is tables today. Um, you can see the links there. Uh, the, re the session is being recorded. It's going to be put up on our YouTube channel in the normal place, and the slide deck and all the other resources, drawing files, data set, etc., will be made available. So this is our webinar series. It is a series containing four tracks. This is the Back to Basics track, and it is very, very basic. So if you're an advanced user, you may not get anything out of it. Just forewarning you. Uh, this is no way intended to be a replacement for formal training in AutoCAD. We are just here to highlight and demonstrate some features that you might not have ever delved into too deeply. So uh, we want to go through what's coming up in the next month of webinars here at the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar series. Uh, Beyond the Basics is next week, and that is going to be working with fields. A lot of really cool stuff you can do with fields, and it's a fairly advanced feature that, uh, frankly, not a lot of people take full advantage of, I think. So you definitely want to check that one out. Um, model documentation coming up at the beginning of October. Model documentation is a new way of, of representing 3D models for layouts, for plotting, and and uh, various other aspects in AutoCAD. Uh, coming up in the tips and tricks section, it's not really going to be so much tips and tricks. It's going to be an introduction to AutoCAD Civil 3D. And it is going to be a very basic intro uh, hour presented uh, by uh, Mike, who's on with us today. He's going to be your guide there to introduce Civil to anybody who's ever thought, hey, what is this Civil 3D thing I hear about? And, and all my drawings pop up and say they've got Civil 3D objects in it, and I need to go get a Civil 3D object enabler. So what is this thing called Civil 3D? So if you've ever wondered, ever uh, curious about it, it's a, good it's a good time to check it out. It's a good hour to attend. And uh, even if you can't make it, of course, check out the, the YouTube posting of the video later on. And then uh, toward the end of October, we've got uh, Mike and I back with the Back to Basics track doing an introduction to external references. And uh, as many of you know, external references are indispensable feature in AutoCAD. So be sure to check that out. We'll go through some, some things and uh, try to explore some areas that maybe not everybody's explored before. And uh, that should be fun. So, like I said, the YouTube is up there. Uh, all the files are posted on Box, made it available to everybody. So be sure to check that out. The Knowledge Network, ever-expanding. We are writing articles daily and modifying articles daily because we now have that power, and it's fantastic. The Autodesk Knowledge Network, made up of articles and troubleshooting tips and steps and everything you might need to hopefully get around any problems you might encounter running Autodesk software. So there are some helpful links there, and again, all this available after the webinar in the normal locations. So what are we covering today? This week's agenda is tables. I'm going to show some examples of tables. We're going to uh, talk about creating and modifying tables from scratch, which is certainly something that you can do. Uh, something that may be even more commonplace is creating tables from data-linked Excel spreadsheets, uh, CSV files, other types of uh, table 
formatted files. Uh, table styles, table style manager, we're going to cover what you can do in there. And if we have time, we were debating about this, whether or not we'll get into formulas. I think we will have some time to fit formulas in. I think Mike's going to cover that in his uh, latter part of his section there. So uh, before we get into it, let's do a, uh, some polls here, as we always like to do, just to gauge who our audience is. Maybe you've changed since last time. We want to make sure we know who we're dealing with so we can cater our content appropriately. So we're going to throw out some polls. And we'll go through them real quick as we can here, show you the results, and then we'll get on to the content. So as, as always, uh, first one is, is this your first AutoCAD webinar? So we'll find out. Usually, we get about 90% return and a very small percentage of, of new folks. Uh, we do get some new folks every time, though, so it's always good to see, and hopefully you come back and join us again. So it looks like we've got... About the majority voted so far, so we'll go ahead and close this one out and share the results with you real quick here. Looks pretty good. Uh, let's check another one here. Uh, this is a good one. We always want to find out what you're using. So we'll launch this one out here. Which version of AutoCAD products do you use? What's up with that Jeopardy music, dude? There's a question up. All right, so there's the results of that. Basically, I was just tired of uh, trying to fill during the polls, so, you know, try to do something different. Stand, so there's the stand. result of that. So most of you are using AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT. It's good to see there that a few of you are using other products as well. So let's move on to the next one. Now this one talks more about the tables specifically. So let's take a look at that. All right, so we'll close this one out and share the results with you. Looks like uh, a lot of you never using tables, or almost never. So that's an interesting thing to find out for sure. So let's uh, move on to the last one related to tables. And so for this is, you know, I, I guess it's for those of you who do use tables, there's the option, of course, that you don't. So we'll take a look here. About even on this one. And for those of you wondering, that was the bonus round music for Wheel of Fortune. Not quite as recognizable and as iconic as Jeopardy, but it serves its purpose. Just a little bit of filler. All right, let's close this one out here. And I'll share the results with you. So some surprising results on some of these polls here, but uh, it's good data to have, good information to know. All right, so let's hide that. All right, let's get back into it here. So let's check out some tables. And there's one, a fine one I might say, that happens to be my dining room table. And lastly, there's this little one, which is a 
pretty generic looking table. Really, this was just an excuse to show you the cool Autodesk chair that at one point some customer made for us in appreciation for some great service that we had done through support. Uh, it's handmade, that chair is. It's uh, fantastic. It's all yarn. I don't know if you can tell from the picture, but it's all hand done. And it's, uh, well, we're, we're pretty proud to have it here in one of our meeting rooms. All right, so getting down to it for real, let's check out how all this looks in AutoCAD. And for that, I will hand you over to Mike. Mike, take it away. Yep. All right, thanks, Zach. Let's see. Let me show my screen here. All righty. Ta-da! Here's another table. Woohoo! And and with that one, that's the last table, Joe, for the day, <laughs> I think. Unless you have something else up your sleeve, Zach. No, I don't think so. I'll uh, think of the last one. one. Okay. All right. Well, let's actually jump into tables and what they are. What they are. So tables are objects in AutoCAD. Um, they're used for holding text or blocks within a row and column format, similar to a lot of your spreadsheet you know, programs out there. Um, like dimensions and text, you can apply a table style to update the contents of the table and how it looks. Tables have many different uses, um, you know, one end of the spectrum. You could use it to keep consistent formatting across a bunch of notes that you may have. Um, you could also use tables to query report information about objects in your drawing. So where are, you know, where do you find tables in here? Um, it's actually up in the annotate tab. If you were with us a few weeks back, I think it was one or two webinars ago, Zach and I actually went through annotation objects in AutoCAD, and this was one of the topics that we kind of jumped over. We said, hey, look, this is where tables are. Um, won't get into it, because if we wanted to, we could probably do an entire webinar on it. And lo and behold, we are fortune tellers. We, here we are doing an entire webinar on tables. So up here, it's kind of a similar format as all the other annotation objects you have your actual table button so you can create a table. Um, up here you have your table styles. And then there's a few other links down here. Um, you have well, data link, which actually Zach is going to be going over in a little bit. Don't want to steal his thunder. And these other two buttons are also you know, part of that linking data. Um, I'll leave it at that for now. Zach will go into it in a little bit. So creating a table, you could either select table up here, or you could just type out table. Once you do that, you get this nice little window that comes up. A few options near, and similar to before, mentioned the table styles. Right now you see door schedule up there, I'm going to keep that one. Um, you get to choose insertion options, um, you can do data link, not going to touch on that one right now. Um, we're just going to start with an empty table just to play around with it. Um, you could decide how you want to insert it. You can specify an insertion point in your drawing. You could also specify a window. Um, one thing to notice, if you do specify a window, clearly you are kind of selecting a window in your drawing. And you'll notice that some of the options here become grayed out because it'll automatically calculate the stuff for you. So if you say, hey, I want, well, a certain number of columns, a certain number of rows, well, I'm going to draw a window and have AutoCAD decide what size you know, those columns and rows are going to be. Or you can go you know, the other way around. Say I want columns to be this height or this width and my rows to be this height. Calculate as many columns and rows as you can. Um, for now, we're going to do specify insertion point. Uh, let's see. I want, let's do, it doesn't really matter too much. Let's do nine columns, uh, three rows you can set your cell styles. We're going to actually touch upon this a little bit more later on. Um, but for now, you know, your first row is going to be the title block. or Well, not title block, but it's going to be the title of your table. Um, second one is going to be a header. And then you can do the rest of them as data. You can play around with this a little bit more, but let's just keep it standard for now. Title, header, data. Press OK. So right now what it's asking me for is what I want the title of my table to be. Let's do the door schedule. And now I have a nice dot because I was so zoomed out. But here you go. 
So nice little table. Um, select it, kind of play around with all the cells in there. Um, you'll notice under the properties, you could actually see what type of you know, style those, um, those rows are following. So if you recall from before, I had made it so that the first row was titles, then headers, and then the rest is just data. You can actually see it right up here. So let's fill out my headers. So we're going to do a door schedule. Let's fill this out here. Let's do it with height, thickness, material, name type, comments. All right. So now I have my title and some headers in there. Um, you know, we decided what size we wanted everything to be, but now that we actually have some data in there, it's looking a little bit cramped. So let's actually select the table. You could, you know, change what, you know, width your columns are. Um, let's play around with thickness for now. Um, great, thickness looks great now, but matte <laughs> the material is a little bit squished. So kind of how this behaves is if you just select and drag, what it'll do is it'll take the space from the next column over. Um, if you do it to the right, if you do it back, it'll just squish your current one. Something that you can do if you hold down control, it'll bring them all out. So see, instead of squishing one or squishing the other, if you just hold control, you can you know, change the width of your column without playing around with the widths of the columns around it. Cool, so it's looking pretty good so far. Um, let's say, whoops, I need some more columns or some more rows. Um, similar to you know, other spreadsheet applications such as Excel, um, if you, uh, let me select this row, if you right click on it, you can insert rows above or below it. Um, let's insert one above. I want another set of headers up here. Um, similar to, again, some other spreadsheet software, you can select multiple cells and then merge them. So I just selected, right click, and you can merge. So you can, you know, or however you want it. Um, here you go. You play around with it that way. You could do the same thing for your columns. You could, you know, insert a column left or right. Uh, let's just put in one in here. Let's, uh, what do we want to put in there? Yeah, fire rating. Select. So now I have a table that looks pretty nice. You can, you know, play around with what it looks like and, whoops, sorry, kind of create a table to whatever fits your needs. Um, going into the table style, there's two ways to access it. You can access it up here. Um, right now we're using the door, door schedule. You could also select this little arrow down here. It's not super intuitive. Um, you should also actually be able to type out table style. Yep, you could also type out table style. So I lied, three ways to get to it. Um, this kind of similar to the other annotation objects that we covered a little while back. You can change what your tables look like. I'm gonna go into the modify tab in here. So you can kind of see what options you can play around with. Um, if you wanted to, you could select a table for a table style. So let's say you want to create a new table style um, and you had a table that you kind of wanted to have that same look of, but want to play around with it. Select this and then select a table. Although this one was just silly because I'm modifying the style for that table. So it doesn't really make too much sense there. But you know, if you're trying to create a new table style, you can go about it that way. Uh, you can play around with the direct 
description. So if you wanted to read it from the bottom up, you can go ahead and do that and see how it changed. Also, um, if you remember just earlier when we were actually creating the table, we had the option of you know making the first the first row title, second row header, anything after that data. You can play around with each individual uh, cell style. So you can you know say, hey, I only want my title to I don't want to change the text in my title. You can go ahead and play around in there. Um, you know you have quite a few options here. You could decide what the fill is, you could decide how you want to align it. Um, formatting, similar to Excel, you could you know, change how numbers um, show up in here. So if you want like percentages, points, all text, like normal text, um, play around with that. Uh, so this type, that one I'm going to come back to in a little bit because that is actually, it's pretty cool. Um, it'll come into play when I'm trying to do, um, when I'm trying to split up my table. But for now, let's bring this guy back to normal. I think I had it this way. No, it's the other way around, I think. Did I keep it the same? Yeah, there you go. All right. Some cool tips and tricks. The, when you're selecting tables, um, you know how in normal AutoCAD, you have kind of two ways to select. You can select this way or select this way. One of them selects everything within your selection box, and the other one selects everything that is completely contained in your selection box. Tab the tables don't really work like that. Once you select them, it's anything that is inside your select, well, anything that your selection box is touching will be selected, so you don't have to you know, select an entire um, cell in order to pick it. It'll automatically just select any of the cells that your selection box is touching. So it's a little bit of a change there from how AutoCAD normally works, but, you know, kind of just going off of industry standard, this makes it a little bit more comfortable and you don't have to, you know, change your behavior from, well, you do have to change your behavior from when you're using AutoCAD, but not when you're using other spreadsheet software. Um, now, next little tip trick I'm going to show. I'm going to add a few more rows because this one will be a lot easier to visualize with more rows. Okay. So similar to Excel, um, you can actually you know move from left and right. Well, move to the right by pressing Tab and you can move down by pressing enter. So that's pretty, you know, pretty standard, but that option is in there for you. Um, another thing that you might recognize, AutoCAD will um, recognize numbers, so for patterns, if you, you know, have one, two, three, four, what's next? Well, five will be next you could actually you know, play around with that and it will recognize numbers. Uh, it will not recognize letters. All it'll do if you put a letter in there is it'll just uh, repeat. So this should be ABC. See, it'll just repeat. It won't actually recognize uh, letters when you're doing it. However, if you do A1, A2, A3, it will recognize those. So, you know, patterns, um, it'll recognize some of them, not all of them, but that's a handy little feature so you're not you know, writing down numbers left and right. Um, you have another option over here that's pretty cool. Um, you can right click into a cell. As I mentioned in the very beginning, you can, you don't have to just insert text in there. You could also insert blocks. Um, and that option actually comes in here. So you have the insert option over here. You can insert blocks, field. You also have some formulas. So if you want to create you know, some equations, um, you have that op option in there. Um, count is a cool, it lets you count the number of times an object shows up in your drawing. 
Um, this drawing is blank, so I don't really have anything to count. But that option is available for you, so you don't have to go in and manually count you know, objects in your drawing. Uh, for field, field is a pretty cool one. Um, actually, Mulker is going to be touching upon fields next week, so definitely stay tuned for that. <laughs> As you can see, there's quite a few different options in here for inputting fields. It's a very powerful tool once you actually get the hang of how to use it. It definitely helps automate a lot of things that would otherwise be very painful to do on your own. The one that I am going to show you, though, is inserting blocks. So you can insert a block. However, I don't have one. So let's, that's uh, way too big. Let's create a block. Actually, I'm going to press B to bring up the block command. I'm going to select this guy. Put up here, I'm going to make a circle. I want to insert him in the middle. So now he is gone. Now, let me go back in here. Right click, insert block. Look for my circle, press OK, and there he is. So not just text, you can also insert little blocks in here. Um, off the top of my head, this could be useful if you, you know, have certain blocks that you want to do quantities for. So say like, hey, I have like the symbol that's showing up in my drawing uh, for my like sewer covers. You could do a, the block that represents your sewer covers, put this block in there, and then select the block next to it and you know just do uh, insert, formula, count, and then count the number of times that that block shows up in your drawing. Um, or you might have to do a minus like, one for a formula so it doesn't count the one in your legend, but that's a, getting yeah. real technical, sorry. <laughs> Getting very technical, but yes, you can do it. Um, so, the other thing that I was going to touch upon is table breaks. So, when you select a table, notice this little arrow down here. Now, notice how to the right something's populating. You can actually split your table up into two you know, separate tables. So, if you run out of space or you just want to make it look this way, you can go ahead and go about it that way, do your table break. Um, now this table looks a little bit strange because it doesn't have any you know, table or headers attached to it. Um, in order to do that, just select the table. You notice that by selecting it, they'll select you know, both of them. It's still one table. Um, right over here, properties under table breaks, uh, you could repeat the top labels. And it pushed it over because I had too many of the, you know, um, I had too many rows, so I kind of wanted to keep it the same size. But you can go ahead and by selecting that option, you know, kind of copy the labels that you had from your original table over to those table breaks. Now, the one thing that I touched upon before that I wanted to bring back. If you remember over here when you're actually modifying your table style, when you're talking about cell styles, we had our data, header, and title, or the other way around, title, header, data. Um, the reason that those labels were, you know, the titles and the headers were copied over is because over here, the type was set to label. So data is normal data. Header was set to label, and title was set to label. So because these cell styles were set to label, when I selected the repeat top labels, that's why they copied over. Just as a quick demonstration, if I go in here, door schedule, modify, let's say I want to switch my headers to data. Now, they don't show up anymore because now my headers are considered data and not labels. So when I try to go to the you know, repeat top labels, it's not going to show up anymore. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of a primer on tables and table styles. Um, there's definitely some other cool stuff that you can do in here, um, and I will be tossing it over to Zach so that he can show you a little bit more about that and uh, linking data, which is actually a very useful tool as well.
Alright, I stop here. And here you go, Zach. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Uh, let me make sure that everybody's looking at what they should be looking at here. I'll give it a moment to refresh. There we go. Okay. So, uh, like Mike said, we're going to cover data linking. And to give you a little bit of background, data linking hasn't always been something you can do in AutoCAD. But what has always been uh, readily available is the option to take stuff from another program, say Excel in this case, right? We'll just copy some of these cells over here. And if we come back over into AutoCAD, we can just paste them in. And that's fine. Now, is this a table? Not really. If we take a look and select the object, bring up the properties palette, it shows us that it's an OLE object, which is object linking and embedding, which is pretty cool. Now, if you want to maintain the linkage between your OLE object and its source, uh, you can't just copy and paste in. You've got to paste special. So if we went back over here and we copied this and then we come back into AutoCAD, there's an option to paste special on the clipboard. Uh, let's see. Paste special right there. Now paste special gives us a few options. Normal paste doesn't maintain any link to the source from which you copied. But if we paste a link, we can either go as AutoCAD entities, in this case a table, hasn't always been an option, or we could put it in as an OLE object. So if we do that, it looks the same, but there's a linkage here. So that if you were to come back into the Excel spreadsheet and say make this a, I don't know, a, a heavy anchor bolt, and you go back into AutoCAD, I guess it's thinking about it. Let's, let's save that change there. Well, I might not be able to switch back and forth between the programs here. Just trying to think, but nothing's happening. Well, in the interest of time, let's just kill things off and start over again, shall we? That's no fun. No big deal. If it can happen to Bill Gates, it can happen to me. <laughs> well, at least you didn't have blue screen. <laughs> hey, now. A little bit better than blue screen. I'm going to knock on wood over here. <laughs> so the, uh, the bottom line there is once you pay special with an OLE object, if you go back to the original Excel spreadsheet and make a modification there, you'll get... Um, you know, the update instantaneously within AutoCAD. Now, uh, that's good. And uh, you can resize the OLE object, but you can't, uh, the formatting is, is whatever it is, you know, in the original Excel spreadsheet. Now, if we were to take that same bit and copy it, and this time we'll do a paste special but instead of choosing an OLE object type, we'll do it as AutoCAD entities this time. What will happen is, as you can see there, it's not the white uh, OLE object that we had before. If we take a look at what this is now, it's a table. Now, in addition, what you didn't see happen, and what we'll go do from scratch here in a sec, is it created a data link to the original spreadsheet. And since it did it automatically, it's just called it Excel Data Link 1. So as you can see, there's the file name. It goes to the table XLS file, and it's the range of cells that you had selected that you copied over. So if you were to go back into the Excel spreadsheet, make a change, come back into AutoCAD, you can update your data link with the link data options here. But what I really want to show is how you can go back and, and do an entire spreadsheet. You can do a range of cells like that, or you can also go into data link 
and we're just going to nuke the one that's in here and start from scratch. So let's create a new Excel data link and we can call it whatever we want. In fact, that's just what we'll call it. So it's going to have us browse for a file. So we'll do that. It's going to be the same file. I'm going to try to generate a, a preview down here, but it's too large to display because this Excel spreadsheet happens to have a lots of rows in it. Now, if you click this little flyout option down here, you get more options. And this deals with what's going to happen as far as formatting of your new table that you're going to create from the data linked Excel spreadsheet. The default is to start with the Excel formatting, but then do not update. So if you make subsequent changes into the formatting of the Excel spreadsheet, those changes will not get passed through to your table in AutoCAD. Or you can select this first option here to keep the table updated with however the Excel spreadsheet happens to get format or have it changed as it goes along. Uh, allow writing to source. This is an important one because with OLE objects, you had one-way communication where if you copied a, a text and you maintained a link, uh, copied a spreadsheet and maintained a link back to it through an OLE object, uh, any updates you made in Excel or your other program uh, would then update <coughs> within the object in AutoCAD. But that was one-way communication. Let's say you wanted to do all of your editing within AutoCAD. That didn't work. So with this allow writing to source file, what it means is that we can then make changes within our table in AutoCAD and have those changes to the table pushed back to the source file. And we'll see in a minute here how that works. Uh, cell contents, much like this formatting down here, um, keep the data formats and formulas, uh, convert data formats to text, solve your formulas in Excel. That's the default. Assumes that you have some formulas in the Excel spreadsheet that you want to keep working there instead of in your table within AutoCAD. Uh, over here, we can link an entire sheet or we can link a named range. Now, when we copied and pasted special, that copied range of cells, it made a link just to that named range. And that's um, what this is down here. Now, in Excel, you can make a named range for a bunch of groups of cells and you can then any of those named ranges that you see in Excel will show up in this uh, pull down here. And uh, to see what that looks like, we can cancel all this for right now. But while we're thinking about it, let's just say that uh, we choose this grouping here and we call it uh, second block because it's the second block of things. I don't think it liked the name I gave it. And eh, we'll just call this one Howdy. There. All right, so if we save the change here, we'll go back to AutoCAD, go back into Data Link. We double click, it's the same as right clicking and modifying. But now we could link to a named range now that I actually have a named range in the Excel spreadsheet. And if you had multiple, of course, they'd all be here. Uh, or I can link to a range of cells. Or I can link to the entire sheet, which is what I'm going to do. So let's just OK out of here and OK out of here. Now, when you make a data link in this manner, nothing actually happens in the drawing until you go to create a table. So if you go up here to the annotate ribbon, click table. This brings in the from data link option that Mike covered earlier. Now that we have a data link, we can choose it here. Say OK. And we're going to insert this table. It's going to take a second here because there are a lot of rows on this thing, but eventually it will pop up here with a, there it is. So as you can see, we have the entirety of that Excel spreadsheet and it's pretty lengthy. So much like Mike did, I'm going to break this thing up here. I'm going to grab the break option at the bottom here. And if you move to the right, you get more columns. Let's just do, let's do three columns. There we go. A little bit more manageable that way. 
Now, if you take a look and you go into any one of these cells and you right click the thing, by default it's going to be locked and you can't change the content. And you find that if you hover over, you see the little lock icon with the chain there indicating that the cell is data locked. But and it also shows in the tooltip there as well that the content is locked. But if we right click a cell, or a group of cells for that matter, we can choose to unlock them. Now if you hover over, it should say that it's data unlocked. So data link cell unlocked, it says not edited. But we can double click on this now, and we actually go in to an editing mode where we can make changes to it. Now I should note that in order for this to work, the source file should not be open in Excel. So I've just closed Excel out here. So let's uh, let's just take out the IC. Uh, let's take out paving. Let's enter that. Now, if we select this cell, we can right click, go to data links, and you could also do the same thing. There's, there's uh, options up here to do it through the ribbon, but the right click option is just as good. So data link, and go back here. We are. Well, we don't want to download changes from the source file. Okay. We select the table. Let's go data link. Now, for whatever reason, our option to upload our changes to the source file are locked out here. They're grayed out. Typically, that would be the option you'd want to go with, and it will then... Let's make a save to our file here. Well, it's going to not behave for me here for whatever reason, but take it my word for it. Uh, if you were to right click this under normal conditions, uh, which are not these right now, we would uh, unlock the data cells, edit them here, and push the change back to the source Excel file. And it could be because I had the Excel file opened when I started this whole thing. So I, I could close it out, open it back up here, and see if that gives me another option here to upload. If it doesn't, we'll move on. Nope, still grayed out. But that's the way it's supposed to work. It's uh, pretty slick that way because it enables you to make your changes within the table here or to do them in Excel, whichever you choose. Now, um, with all of the, the table options you have here in AutoCAD now, we should point out that by no means should you go abandon your, your Excel program and, and, and don't use... AutoCAD exclusively for your tables because, frankly, it's not a spreadsheet program. This is just meant to give you some options to further annotate your drawings, and uh, that's why the interaction and the interoperability with tables and Excel is there. But it's not meant to replace Excel. So uh, I've had a few instances where people are disappointed in AutoCAD's <laughs> uh, table capabilities that they aren't quite up to up to snuff with what Excel is, and and. We never said that this was going to be a replacement for your spreadsheet software. So please uh, use it for what it is. Uh, it's, it's handy and it enables you to further annotate your drawings with table content, but we don't want it to, to take the place of, of your uh, existing spreadsheet software. So uh, the only other thing that I wanted to cover real quick here, and uh, you might notice that the, the, the distances between your columns when you break them might not be what you want. Uh, it's a real quick thing to do to change those things. You can go into the properties of your table. You can uh, set manual positions for your breaks to yes. And what that will do for us, it will enable, it'll enable us to go in real close here, grab the grips in the corners, and you can then bring the edges closer together, shortening the gaps between your columns. Now, it looks like they're overlapping there, but when you deselect it, you can see that they've still got a gap in between them there. 
And we can do the same thing with this guy over here. Now, but again, by default, these are going to be locked, the, the, the gaps. But uh, if, you, if you edit that property of your table, it will then enable you to decrease the gaps between the breaks. Oh, and I didn't uh, duplicate my column headings. I should take Mike's advice and go in and repeat my top labels here. There we go. Of course, you notice nothing happened, and that is another thing that Mike covered here, and we'll show you this in action. This first abbreviations cell here is a data designation. So if we want to make it a header, though, then, or a title for that matter, because those are both labels. Let's just make it a header. Now it gets duplicated because now it is a label type of cell and not a data type of cell. So now it will get reproduced uh, at the top of every column as you go through there. It's great that you went over that. Actually, somebody was asking about how to do it. Uh -huh. Any questions? Well, hopefully that helped. Uh, and speaking of questions, this is about the end of what I had prepared. And uh, at this point, uh, unlike usual, we have some time. So let's open it up for questions and let's go through anything anybody wants to cover here as uh, hopefully related to tables. But uh, we'll see what we get as far as questions go. Uh, so uh, I have a question uh, from uh, a lot of people. Uh, they're wondering, how do you make a wood table? No, I'm sorry. No, not that. No, no, not that one. I just had to tease you guys a little bit. <laughs> uh, so, in the build space downstairs. Yeah. In the build space downstairs. <laughs> hey, so I'm trying to think. Uh, a lot of people were wondering, uh, it's like, uh, how do you, how can you adjust the automatic row height or automatic column height here? Is it possible or not? Well, let's take a look. Um, you can do it through a couple of, of ways. Um, when you select a table and you and you go to edit the thing, you've got all these uh, options up here. Um, you've got uh, you can adjust the spacing between the lines, um, but uh, for tables, you can probably your best bet is to to do your table style. Uh, let's take a look and see what we have here. Um, so largely your text height determines your row height. So if we, let's take a look and see if that works out. Let's go 0.25 on that. Let's change it for all. Let's change it for header. Uh, let's make our headers taller than our data. Let's go 0.33. Uh, let's go title. It's going to be bigger than that. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do that. And let's uh, put the data back down to, yeah, there we go. So the data is 0.25. The header is 0.33. The titles are also. So let's say OK. So that effectively does change things there. Let's take a look at the individual edits. Now again, this maybe I should start over with a table that isn't data linked because the, the formatting here is going to largely be governed by what it came in as. So let's, uh, let's just start a brand new table here that isn't. And let's just go, yeah, five rows and five columns. That's fine. So nothing is controlled ahead of time here. Um, yeah, I wasn't seeing the option for it. Oh, there you go. So there's our option for the whole table height. Um, yeah. And similarly, if you if you go right or left with this top grip here, you'll get your uh, uniform column width to increase that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, now this one is doing it just because um, we had specified how many rows and columns we wanted. True. The only option I could find was to uh, give them equally. So if you right click under rows, 
uh, uh, in the context menu, right, just a tad bit below, mm -hmm. yeah. where you can say as rows equally. Rows equally. I mean, it'll make all the rows the same height, though, if they are not locked. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. So that was the only thing I could find uh, in here. At least. Yeah. So it. So it may not have, uh, like, I think what they were probably looking for is the in-between in grips here that, you, like, you get with uh, with Excel or other programs here. Well, if you select one of the cells, and the cell will actually give you the individual grips. So now, if you change the grip down there, it'll it will change the size of them. Again, oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying there. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's true. a little different in that the grips aren't at the top, at the top. or the left, yeah. but but it does look like it's available on a per cell. Or I imagine you could probably grab a, uh, a, a a selection of cells and have your grips act on those guys. Yeah. So yeah, you can do the same thing. It's just a little bit different than it is in uh, in other programs, but but you certainly can adjust those those widths and heights, or you could do them all in you know as as a whole by stretching the whole table together up or down. Something. Hopefully, uh, an easier one now. Maybe maybe. <laughs> so, <laughs> can you make a, a table annotative or not? Louise is asking. I'm going to say no on that. And the only reason I'm saying no is because uh, there's no annotative option over here in the properties. And for any other op object, like dimensions or uh, leaders, for example, you have the options. Now, what you could do, and, and I've never tried it, so it's something that's uh, possible, is you can include a table, or any other object for that matter, inside of a block definition. And blocks can be annotative. So in theory, everything within a, a, a block would, would scale up or down. Um, so that's uh, a mystery. Uh, making it even more interesting is the option when you go into your table style. Uh, if I type table style, right? Style. When you're in your table style, um, you have the option for your text to use different text styles. Now you can choose an annotative text style for the text used in your table. So your table itself isn't annotative, but the content of your uh, table cells, the text, would be annotative and as such would, would scale up and down uh, as any other annotative object would. I have to think that the uh, that would affect the the cell width and the row heights, but and not having tested it, I can't say for for certain for certain what what would happen there. But certainly something to play around with, absolutely. Hey Zach, something somebody pointed out. So when I was uh, you know, kind of navigating through the cells using tab and enter, if you press shift, it'll go back. So if you do shift tab, it'll oh yeah, go to the left. Oh yeah. Uh, Scott mentioned it in the the questions it was more of an answer, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought, and to be honest with you, when you were going through it, I thought that, but I, I figure, you know, shift tab is, you know, it's pretty advanced. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but man. this is a basics. This is a basic session here, but no. Uh, but yeah, certainly shift tab is a is an, is a definitely a good option if you're uh, shift enter. Just, if you just shift. Uh, um, if you're just running things on the keyboard only. How are we doing questions, Naman? What do we got? Uh, well, could the table be created in a paper space? Well, yeah, I mean, that can be one-to-one. -one. Uh, so sure, that was sure. the annotative part of it, I guess Tim is suggesting. Oh, oh um, I see. Yeah, uh, yeah, they, they certainly can. You can create a table anywhere, just like any other object. Um, and uh, uh, but but the annotative text within your table 
you know, again, uh, not to get too much into annotative scaling, but anything that's in paper space doesn't scale annotatively as it does if it's in model space within a, a scaled viewport. So that's something to consider there. Another uh, question was, is the data link only a data itself and not the formatting, or can you bring some of the formatting in? Oh, no, you can absolutely bring the formatting. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Uh, row heights and column widths and all that. Um, that, you know, when we take a look back at the data link options, oh, let's get out of it all together. There we go. When we take a look at the, uh, let's just make a new one. I don't know if I have any other tables to choose. Uh, I guess we could just choose the same one again. But yeah, the options here, um, you can absolutely uh, keep the, 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 the Excel formatting so that if, if you later you know, decide to subsequently go in and change the formatting within the source Excel spreadsheet, then the formatting of your table would then get updated, and 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 for that matter, any any changes that you make within a data linked Excel spreadsheet, you're going to get a pop up balloon down here, in the bottom corner that indicates that just like when an XREF changes or any other linked object changes, you'll get a pop up saying that your uh, data linked Excel spreadsheet has changed. Would you like to update your data link? And it has a little uh, hyperlink you can click on to to pull those changes in and make them effective. I hope that hope that answers the what's the question. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, okay. Seth, is that um, let us know? <laughs> okay. um, I'm enjoying your name range over there, Zach. Howdy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Duty. Yes. So oh, yeah, can you show the merged uh, cells? Because somebody's asking, hey, can I do the last row as a kind of header or? <laughs> you know, something like that. Sure, so let's do that. Let's pick the, let's pick all the cells in the bottom row here. Merge. And let's merge them all. Uh, Just all? Sure. Okay. And then, yeah, you can, now that this is one type, you can change the row style to be header. And if you put some header content in here, if you then went and you selected the whole table and you split it out into a couple different columns, uh, you can then repeat the bottom labels. So the bottom labels, just like top labels, will repeat between your columns. You could also go to uh, the table style and then switch it. So your Instead of reading it from the top from the top to the bottom, you could read it from bottom to top. Oh yeah, this the the, the table direction. Yeah, exactly. So if we went, if they want and, like headers at the bottom. You could also go about it that way. Yep. There we go. There we just reverse the whole thing. Boy, that's confusing. <laughs> nope, not at all. <laughs> I, did it switch over the the option to duplicate top labels? That's, let's see. Um, <laughs> Still, no. still, still says no for top labels. So yeah, boy, if somebody sent you this drawing and you didn't know what they'd done, you didn't look at their table style, you'd be looking at the properties thing and going, "What, what is going on?" <laughs> that's a that's a good point. Uh, so it's good to know what that stuff does behind the screen. Uh, so it looks like we're getting toward the top of the hour here. So before we go, I want to make sure that we uh, finish out with. Uh, Uh, here we are. So in the in the slide deck, we do have some links to additional resources, as always. Um, we want to make sure that uh, you know that all this is available on the YouTube page and the standard box locations, and the links should be in your invites. So uh, we do want to do one last poll before we go. And we'll pick that here, and we'll throw that out real quick. 
Hey Zach, while you're waiting for that, do we have a link to the YouTube videos? Because I know somebody was asking if there was an easy way for them to access this in the future. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, boy, I don't have it at the... Uh, uh, let me see if I can find it. I can. Yeah. I can oh, search I for it. it. It should be right here. No, no, I got it. All right. Perfect. Thank you. So not a lot of votes tallied, but we'll go ahead and close out the poll and share the results here. So the majority say that they learned something new today, and uh, the other 3% are jaded, and they will never learn anything new from us. <laughs> I know I learned something new. <laughs> shift tab, shift enter. Oh, yes. Good stuff. So, Naman or Mike, if you have it, I'll throw it to you if you guys want to show the link there. I already posted it in the... Oh, did you? Okay. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm I not... Did, I did. Great, yeah, great. I'm not looking at the questions. There we go. So it looks like we're at the top. So as always, we certainly appreciate everybody's uh, questions, and we always appreciate your attendance. And if there's anything else that you want to see, uh, there are feedback links in your invites. So please let us know what you want to see from us in future webinars. And until then, we will see you next time.